for the third time in the last four years and the fifth time this decade, the Major League Champion will be decided in Game 7 of the World Series. The game is being broadcast on Fox and streamed on FoxSports.com. Taking no chances, the Astros decided to pull Zach Grank from the game after he allowed a solo homer and a walk, as Houston's lead had shrunk to 2-1. To the move proved disastrous, as Howie Kendrick took Will Harris deep, giving the Nationals a shocking 3-2 lead. Grank had retired Adam Eaton on a grounder to short to start the inning, but he gave up half of his lead when Anthony Rendon hammered a ball 374 feet to left for a solo home run. Juan Soto drew a walk, and manager A.J. Hinch had seen enough, pulling a starter who had looked absolutely unhittable just two batters earlier and was still at just 80 pitches. Kendrick was the first batter Will Harris faced, and the MVP of the NLCS sliced a ball 336 feet down the right field line for a game-changing two-run homer off the foul pole that made it a 3-2 game. According to MLB, Kendrick is just the second player in World Series history to hit a come-from-behind, go-ahead homer in the seventh inning or later, with the first being Hal Smith in 1960. Harris allowed a single to Asdrubal Cabrera, and with that his day was done. Hinch replaced him with Roberto Osuna, who walked Ryan Zimmerman, got Yan Gomez to pop out to second, and escaped the inning when Victor Robles flied out to right. Houston could not answer. After Michael Brantley flied out to center, Alex Bregman grounded out to second. Patrick Corbin then allowed a two-out single to center by Yuli Gurriel. The mighty Jothan Alvarez stepped to the plate, but he grounded out on a soft grounder back to the pitcher. Washington is into its bullpen, Zach Grank is dealing, and the Astros continue to lead, 2-0. Grank has looked mostly unhittable. He recorded another perfect inning, getting Yan Gomez to fly out to center and Victor Robles to ground out to first before striking out Tree Turner looking to end the inning. Grank is at just 67 pitches through six shutout innings. Max Scherzer was relieved by Patrick Corbin, and the left-hander, who normally serves as a starter, allowed a leadoff single to Jake Maris Nick. That was it, though. George Springer couldn't stop his bat on a pitch in the dirt, striking out, and Jose Altuve grounded into a double play to end the inning. Zach Grank has been better, and will certainly pitch deeper into the game, but that shouldn't take anything away from Max Scherzer, who has absolutely battled on a night without his best stuff and limited the powerful Houston lineup to just two runs. In the top half of the inning, Grank got his second strikeout of the night when Juan Soto could not pull his bat back on a changeup that was nearly in the dirt, though the 21-year-old made it clear he did not believe he had gone around, gesturing toward the first base umpire in hopes that he would disagree with the umpires at third and behind home. The Nationals finally got their second base runner of the night when Howie Kendrick walked, and he reached second on a sacrifice bunt by Asdrubal Cabrera but he was left there when Ryan Zimmerman popped out to first to end the inning. Michael Brantley led off the bottom of the inning with a single to right, but Scherzer struck out Alex Bregman after Houston's superstar slugger had cranked a few screaming foul balls into the stands. Yuli Gurriel nearly hit into a double play, just beating Cabrera's throw to first. Then, with two outs, Scherzer walked Jothan Alvarez. He got ahead of Carlos Correa, 0-2, but could not finish him off, as Correa smoked a grounder down the third base line that Anthony Rendon couldn't handle, bringing Gurriel around to score, making it 2-0 Astros. Washington challenged a play at third, where Alvarez appeared to briefly pop off the bag, but the safe call on the field was confirmed. With runners on first and third with two outs, Robinson Chirino struck out, ending the inning and almost certainly the night for Scherzer, who is up to 103 pitches. Zach Grank showed off the leather that made him a five-time Gold Glove winner, snaring a sharp grounder by Tree Turner and easily throwing to first for the first out of the inning. He followed that up with an even more impressive grab, leaping to get a chopper from Adam Eaton that appeared likely to get by him. He ran the count full against Anthony Rendon but struck out the Nationals' cleanup hitter with a well-placed, 89-mile per hour fastball. Grank has still faced the minimum number of batters in this game, 
with his lone blemish being Juan Soto's single in the second, which was erased by a double play. Despite having flirted with disaster in the previous two innings, Max Scherzer was back out for the fourth. He got Carlos Correa to ground out to second and struck out Robinson Chirinos, but he allowed a two-out single to right by Josh Reddick. George Springer drew a four-pitch walk to put a second man on base, but Jose Altuve flied out to center to end the inning. Another inning of efficiency from Zach Grank and escapism from Max Scherzer. In the top half of the inning, Grank continued his quiet efficiency, once again needing just eight pitches to get through the Nationals. A grounder back to the pitcher and two fly balls to center were all Washington could muster. Grank has faced the minimum number of batters through three innings while needing just 28 pitches to get there. Jose Altuve stroked a single to left to lead off the bottom half of the inning. After Michael Brantley flied out to left, Alex Bregman walked. That brought up Yuli Gurriel, who had homered just one inning before, but this time he got under the pitch and flied out to right. Scherzer then got out of yet another jam when Jotan Alvarez drove a ball to deep center field that found its way into Victor Robles's glove. Scherzer is one pitch short of having thrown twice as many as Grink. The Astros struck first, taking a 1-0 lead on a homer by Yuli Gurriel. In the top of the first, Juan Soto singled off Zach Grink for the first hit of the game for either team, but he wasn't on base long as Grink induced a comebacker from Howie Kendrick that the Astros turned into a 1-4-3 double play. Grink then finished off the scoreless inning by getting Asdrubal Cabrera to ground out sharply to first. Gurriel led off the bottom half of the inning, and he crushed a 2-1 slider from Max Scherzer 389 feet to left center for his second home run of the postseason. Back-to-back -back singles by Jotan Alvarez and Carlos Correa then put Scherzer in a tight spot. He got the first out on a pop-up by Robinson Chirinos to the catcher in foul territory and got a second on a grounder to first from Josh Reddick that advanced the runners to second and third. But Scherzer escaped when George Springer hit a sinking liner into left that Soto was barely able to snare. Scherzer got out of the inning with relatively little damage, but coming off an injury he had to labor a bit, and he is up to 33 pitches in the game. After last night's intense first inning, Today's opening frame was remarkably quiet, with both Zach Grank and Max Scherzer looking strong. Grank needed just eight pitches to cruise through a 1-2-3 inning. Tree Turner smoked a liner down the third baseline that Alex Bregman snared for the first out. Adam Eaton hit a little dribbler in front of the plate and was thrown out at first by Robinson Chirinos and Anthony Rendon grounded out to third. In the bottom half of the inning, Scherzer was not quite as sharp but he still held the Astros scoreless. He got Houston's leadoff man, George Springer, to fly out to center. Jose Altuve grounded out softly to short and after Scherzer walked Michael Brantley on five pitches, he got out of the inning when Alex Bregman flied out to right. Astros. 1 George Springer CF. 2 Jose Altuve 2B. 3 Michael Brantley LF. 4 Alex Bregman 3B. 5 Yuli Gurriel 1B. 6 Jotan Alvarez DH. 7 Carlos Correa SS. 8 Robinson Chirino C. 9 Josh Reddick RF. Zach Grain P. Nationals. 1 Tree Turner SS. 2 Adam Eaton RF. 3 Anthony Rendon 3B. 4 Juan Soto LF. 5 Howie Kendrick DH. 6 As Dribble Cabrera 2B. 7 Ryan Zimmerman 1B. 8 Yan Gomez C. 9 Victor Robel CF. Max Scherzer P. A mostly uninspiring World Series turned on its head Tuesday when the Washington Nationals defeated the Houston Astros, 7 2, in a dramatic game 6 full of heroes, subplots, and memorable moments, all to set up baseball's ultimate game. Will the Nationals win their first World Series as a franchise, and the first for the city of Washington since the old Senators won it in 1924? Or will the Astros win a second championship in three years? We have a great opportunity tomorrow to play a home game, Game 7 of the World Series, Astros manager A.J. Hinch said after Game 6 on Tuesday.
maybe not how we drew it up in terms of how we got there, but it doesn't take away the opportunity we have to win the World Series. But does playing at home even matter? Or, worse, is it actually a detriment? This World Series has already broken ground as the first in which the visiting team won the first six games. That is especially remarkable considering that the Astros had the best home record in baseball this regular season, 60-21. What, then, explains this anomaly? None of the players, coaches or managers, or reporters, have any clear reasons for it, other than pure fluke. It's weird, really, Nationals manager Dave Martinez said after Game 6. I mean, we can't explain it. I know we were trying to win games at home and just couldn't do it. We came here today and, like I say, behind Steven Strasburg we played really well. The Game 7 matchup is just as intriguing as Game 6 was, between Strasburg and Justin Verlander. Tonight will feature Max Scherzer for the Nationals against Zach Grank of the Astros. Grank has been okay in the postseason, but Scherzer has been stellar. The only question is, Will he be healthy? Scherzer was supposed to start Game 5 in Washington on Sunday, but was scratched because of spasms in his upper back and neck. He said it was so bad the morning of the game that he could not lift his arm, and his wife had to help him dress. He took a cortisone shot later that day, which takes about 48 hours to work. On Tuesday afternoon, Scherzer threw in the outfield before the game and proclaimed himself ready to go for Game 7. As it turned out, he was even ready to go by Game 6. He warmed up in the Nationals' bullpen during the game, and if Anthony Rendon had not hit a two-run homer in the seventh to extend Washington's lead to 5-2, Scherzer may have gone into the game for the bottom of that inning. There were a lot of phone calls those last three innings, said Sean Doolittle, the Nationals' relief pitcher. But he was ready to go. He looked good. He looked clean and full on ready to go. Game 6 featured some entertaining histrionics between the cleanup hitters for both teams, but it is doubtful it will carry over to Game 7. Alex Bregman homered in the first inning and carried his bat all the way to first base, a serious no-no in baseball etiquette. Then four innings later, Juan Soto hit a titanic blast into the upper reaches of the second deck at Minute Maid Park, and he also carried his bat to first base. Soto said he thought what Bregman did looked really cool. I wanted to do it, too. While opinions about the showmanship were divided, both managers said they felt it was wrong, as well as many players. Bregman apologized to the Nationals players and again publicly for what he did. He also said of Soto's copycat job, I deserved it. With that, the matter seemed to be settled. Even though there will be two stout starting pitchers, Expect everyone to be available to help out on the mound except for Verlander and Strasburg. Jared Cole pitched Sunday night, but he will undoubtedly come out of the bullpen if needed, and the same goes for Washington's Patrick Corbin and Annie Ball Sanchez. After all, these are the games that make baseball legends. David Waldstein